Major Slack Attack. Hey, welcome back to Major Slack Attack here for a stop for strategic Starfield gameplay and uh, what I'm going to show you today is something I've been working on for about a week. Alright, I'm going to codename this Operation Recon S1. Operation Recon S1, now, I know it sounds mysterious, but it's all going to tie in with what we're doing um, with the, the Free Star Rangers quest line and the grab jump that we're going to be doing um, to continue to work on payloads and astrodynamics. Off camera I did some things. I um, I was just two jumps away from completing the challenge for rank 2 of astrodynamics. So I did that and I got rank 3 and now working on rank 3. The challenge is to make 30 grab jumps and I've already got two jumps in there and I have an extra skill point. Over to payloads. This is the one that we really want to work on. Make 25 grab jumps of 75% or more of maximum cargo capacity. We have 15 more to make to get to rank 3. Man, that's important. I'm going to make a major overhaul to the Red Hornet. And Operation Recon S1. Okay, I'm going to give you a little bit of information now, but all will be revealed later on. This is about becoming more self-sufficient. I'm getting tired of just running around to stores and buying materials that I need. And they, I mean, I'm sure you've all done this, you know, you're trying to, you're working on something, you go, oh, I need these materials. You go running off to the store, you buy those materials to come back, you do that thing. Then you go, okay, the next step of this operation is to do this. Then you go, oh, I need these materials. And then you go out to the store, you buy those resources, you come back and it's back and forth, back and forth from the store to your outpost or your store to your wherever you're working on. And um, it's come to my attention. This is counterproductive. This is counterproductive. We should be becoming more self-sufficient, okay? And mining our own resources because there's a lot of resources that are quite common to some basic operations that we're doing all the time. We just like setting up outposts and whatever. And also with some research I want to do near the end of the Freestar Rangers quest line, it's all tied into that. All right. So first of all, I want to make some major changes to the Red Hornet. Fair warning, uh, ever since the latest patch, uh, my ship builder has been, part of my French, fucked up. There's been this strange flashing. Um, and I've tried everything to try to solve this flashing. I strongly suspect it has something to do with... Um, the refresh rate and I've tried every possible combination of refresh rates. I've tried V-Sync on, V-Sync off. I've tried going into the NVIDIA control panel and uh, you know digging around with all the adaptive refresh rates and faster, slower, everything. And the only thing I've done is um, recompile the shaders and I'm not really eager to do that in the middle of a walkthrough which might completely screw up the game because I have yet, I've read about half a dozen pages on how to recompile the shaders and none of them really have a clear idea. I mean I got a pretty good idea how to do it but um, a lot of them are saying things like saying things like well if this doesn't work try this and I'm like oh okay so you're not really sure if your method is gonna work or not. I'm not willing to risk screwing up my game in the middle of a walkthrough just to correct what is I would say a minor annoyance. You're gonna see it in effect here in the shipbuilder. Anyway, let's get underway. I'm going to rebuild the Red Hornet and put some new living quarters in it, some new habs on it, all right, that are going to be far more useful than this captain's quarters and this armory. And we're going to make another level too, all right? So let's rip it apart. Select the landing gear. See that flash there? That's what I'm talking about. That's what started happening since the latest patch. And I don't see anything, any mention about it, but uh, whatever. It's going to have to deal with it. Okay, so rip that out there and I'm gonna take the docker. Here's the docker, rip this off and just put it neatly over here. Take the reactor and put it out neatly over here. And take the grad drive and put it right here. And take this fuel tank and actually just gonna delete. See that flash there? See that? That's what's been happening ever since the latest patch. Thanks a lot, Bethesda. <laughs> Nothing for I don't wanna bash Bethesda, but um that's why I play exclusively offline. Ain't broke, don't fix it. So now it's, you know, it wasn't broke and now it's broken because they fixed it. <laughs> Go 
Go figure. Anyways, it's, it's like I said, it's a minor annoyance. Um, there's no flashing anywhere else in the game. I played extensively. It's just in the ship builder. Um, let's delete this. Okay, let's start working on the cowling level. On the cowling level, we're going to add over to halves. Go down to two by ones. In case you never noticed, see here, demos all in one berth, two by one, and you see all these dashes here. These are indicate a, a number of variants on this particular item. Okay, so if you just use these controls here, you can scroll through the variants, and they're all the same price. So I'm just going to scroll through these, and we're going to add the living quarters. Why? Because it has a storage crate in it. Okay, and let me just quickly tell you, I went through all these in detail. I attached every single one, and I can tell you exactly what each one does. The all-in-one berth adds um, a bed and a cooking station. The armory just adds, well, you already know what that does. It just adds a whole bunch of weapon display cases and some storage. Captain's quarters adds a bed and a cooking station. Computer core adds nothing. In fact, it looks pretty shitty. Then the back is dark and it doesn't give you any any benefit. Same with the control station, doesn't give you anything. And it looks pretty shitty as well, pardon my French. <clears throat> the infirmary gives you um, a pharmaceutical lab and that's it, I believe, just the pharmaceutical lab. The living quarters gives you a storage crate with 150 storage, which is what I want. And the science lab gives you um, a research lab and I think a pharmaceutical station as well but I'm, I'm positive it gives you a research lab and the workshop that's where the big money is this one gives you a research lab industrial workbench a weapon workbench and a spacesuit workbench this is the best one we're gonna add that too let's go back to the living quarters I definitely want this I'm gonna slap this on the top level and then we're gonna put the the reactor back here and we're gonna put the grab drive back here like this come on grab drive come on you know you want it there we go and I'm gonna take the docker edit up one level at accept bring it on over and put it right there all right and why did I delete the fuel tank because for some reason when you add that fuel tank to the end of this grab drive here the game complains that it's an unattached module I have not been able to figure out why that is because there's clearly an attach point here and there's an attach point on the other end of the fuel drive or the fuel tank so we're gonna have to add a new fuel tank over here and that would be the 300 G HE3 tank Put that sucker right there and I want to move this shield over here and here we're going to add a new cargo hold. The Caravel V101 cargo hold, which adds 225 cargo. Very good. And that's the cow what I call the cowling level. Yeah, you see that flashing? That's that started happening ever since the latest patch. If that's happening to you and you know a fix for it, a guaranteed fix. I'm not into speculation. If you're just going to say, Slack, did you try this? No, sorry, I'm not into it. You try it and give me get back to me with the results. Okay, you did the legwork. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'm just saying I've, tried, I've been working on this for like, you know, maybe an hour or so, maybe an, uh, an hour or two trying to fix that problem. And I've, I'm done. I've tried maybe a dozen different solutions. None of them worked. So I'm done. Um... I need a bona fide solution, not something. Did you try? Okay, you did the labor. Okay, um, let's delete this. And here we're gonna put the Demos all in one berth, two by one. That's it right there. And we're gonna delete the armory. And here we're gonna add the Demos workshop. Okay, so find the all in one two all in one berth, two by one, and just scroll through the variants all the way to the end to workshop add that and we're good that's exactly the way i want it okay so we got a fuel tank we got the cargo hole we got the shield 
that's it. Before we put it back together, I'm just going to give it a new paint job. So let's just select everything here. Go to paint job. And this time in color one, I'm going to use this predefined swatch here, gold. Color two is going to be black. Put brightness all the way down, the saturation all the way down. All you have to do is put brightness all the way down, but I like to put saturation down just for my own personal um, organization. And for color three is the same thing. It could be black. So just put brightness all the way down. Okay, accept. And I want to make a little statement with this cargo hold here. So select that color. And color two is going to be kind of an orangey color. So let's put this right around here like that. Put saturation all the way up like that. Brightness up a little more like that. That's nice. And then color one's going to be black. There you go, just like that. Okay, accept. And that's it. Okay, we're going to slap the sucker back together. Beautiful. That's nice. And we're going to rename it. Only got one warning missing weapon attachment, or whipping, missing weapon assignment. No other warnings. I know I did drop the mobility, but there was no warning about it, so it was no big deal. And let's rename it. Rename it. We're going to call it the Yellow Jacker. <laughs> there you go. That's our new ship, the Yellow Jacker. And we're good. We're out of here. Except, let's make sure everything is hunky dory. The cargo hold should be 702. 702, that is correct. Correct, Amundo. Okay, so we want to bring the cargo hold up to 75% capacity. That would be, according to Mr. Laptop, exactly 526.5 units. Let's call it kilograms. We can just round it off to 530. And part of this special Operation Recon S1 run requires that we make a batch of adaptive frames. So first of all, let me give you a little tour of the ship. Show you what we got. First of all, I wanted a bed. Definitely wanted a bed. So that is, here's the demos all in one berth. Two by one. Here's the bed, so we can sleep, recover our health, and it has a cooking station over here. It's called the galley. Okay, bed and a cooking station. Next, has a cockpit. The same cockpit, the samurai cockpit, and our cargo hold space has been increased to 702. Let's go into the Mac, and I'll show you the workshop. This is a really good deal. In the workshop, you get industrial workbench, research lab, weapon workbench, and a spacesuit workbench. It's fantastic. I think there's even a storage crate here, but this is only like 10 storage. But still, throw a favorite weapon in there. And I think there's a cooler in here somewhere as well. Is this a cooler? Yeah. That's only 10 storage as well. Okay, and finally, the living quarters upstairs. This was important. This is why I added an extra deck, because I wanted a storage box. This is what comes with the living quarters. Okay, with 150 storage, this is going to be very convenient. Okay, so that's our new ship, the Yellow Jacker. And here's the docker. There we go. Okay, good. Next, um, we want to increase the storage capacity to... 75%. 75% of 702 is, like I said, Mr. Laptop said it's like 526.5. We'll round it off to 530. And part of our special op requires us to have some adaptive frames. So let's make some adaptive frames in our workshop. We need 50 adaptive frames, conveniently enough. Oh, because the um, the game is using the resources that are on board. 
the ship right now instead of using resources from the outpost. So let's just do that. Hell, let's make 51 adapter frames. There we go. Okay, I'm going to throw those in. Alright, so we're at 462. We need to bring it up to 530 or more. We're going to bring it up over 530 because we're going to be using resources as we go along. But we don't want it accidentally going below 530 as we're using up resources. So let's go back, go back outside and avail ourselves of the resources that are here at our Bessel 3 B outpost, namely the, the aluminum, the cobalt, the nickel, and the iron. And this is what took a long time to figure out exactly how many resources I needed to do this run. Okay, so let's start with aluminum. We're going to need 150 aluminum. Cobalt. 50 cobalt will do fine. Nickel. Once again, 50 nickel will do fine. And iron. We're going to need a little more iron. So let's go with 70 iron. Let me say 75 iron just to be sure. Done and done. All right. And let's just send these um, over to the ship. Cargo hold. Uh, inventory down to resources. Store all resources. Check it out. That's perfect. Okay, so now we have the cargo hold up to 642. We need that at 530. Now, just checking out Mr. Laptop. Mr. Laptop says my cargo hold mass should be approximately 625 to 630. It's a little overloaded, but that's okay. Um, we have a, a contingency plan. Get up. Okay, as we're trying to control the weight of the cargo hold to keep it at 75% capacity or better, and it's filled with resources, but it's also got a whole bunch of junk in here too, but I'm leaving that junk for extra for some extra weight. I've also got all these dumbbells loaded on. Where are my dumbbells? Oh yeah, right. Okay, so I got two dumbbells here. And I have more dumbbells stashed at the outpost here. Let me go grab those. <laughs> nice jump. Right in here. Here, I'm going to grab those eight dumbbells, and I got some other stuff there that I'm keeping for personal reasons. Back to the ship. And I'm going to take... those two dumbbells out. There we go. So ship mass is exactly according to plan between 620 and 630. Okay, so as we add, we'll have room to add resources and we'll also have um, these dumbbells which we can use to tweak the cargo capacity by just adding some some items that, you know, just some throwaway items. These are really good because they weigh 10 kilos each, and they're complete garbage. And they're all the same, so they're easy to man manipulate. So I'm just going to stash these dumbbells here in the storage. Miscellaneous. There we go, 10 dumbbells. Okay, so we can use that to tweak the cargo capacity 
if it ever falls below 75% because we're using resources as we're going on this major space trucking adventure. All right? And this is all about, once again, um, doing our grab drives and also becoming more self-sufficient. So we're working on the payloads, grab drives, and we're working on becoming more self-sufficient. First stop is, I got a detailed list here. First stop is Alpha Centauri and Voss, the moon of all of us. Okay, so out we go. There's Alpha Centauri. And we're going to jump everywhere. Keep working on those grab jumps. This is United Colony Space. Maintain current course while we scan for contraband. Scan complete. You're cleared to land at New Atlantis. Okay, let me prepare for... Just in case we get into some trouble. Okay, engine is at one. Shield is full on. Pull one bar out of um, particle beam. Leave that there for grab jumping, and we're good. Okay, so now we want to go to the moon of Voss. Or rather, the moon of all of us. And all of us is at the bottom left. There's all of us, and there is Voss. That's where we're going. Let's just travel there. Very good, no hostiles. Waiting for my XP to roll in, there we go. Scan. Okay, the instructions are find rocky desert. Look for backwards giant L-shaped map. Okay, I know what to look for. Um, first of all, scroll it down so that you get to the pole there and then scroll it so that you're rolling around the equator. And we're looking for this giant L-shaped mass. There it is right there. This L-shaped mass here. See that? Backwards L with some crap on the right side. Zoom in and plunk yourself right in the middle. It doesn't have to be exact. And make sure it says Rocky Desert and Land. I just want to head up to bed, make sure my well-rested bonus is always topped off. Okay, and we're here for some tungsten. And to set up a tungsten... ...supplier, if you will. Okay, so out we go. Scan, outpost. We have tungsten. Let's plunk down the outpost. Get that, and the tungsten extractor is going to require two tungsten. We only have one. That's okay. So, let's go hunt up some tungsten. Scan. And we're looking for anything outlined in blue. There's some outlined blue. Should find it pretty quickly. There's some vanadium. As you can see, this is a mineral-rich location. There's some more blue. Anything outlined in blue indicates something that we haven't researched yet. There we go, there's some tungsten. Mission accomplished. That's all we need, one tungsten. If you don't have any tungsten, you have to keep doing that until you find two, two tungsten. All right, back to the outpost beacon. 
fly cam mode, we have to put the tungsten extractor on a vein. So, and there's our vein, plunk it down. And we need five power. The amount of power that the wind turbine or the solar array produces varies per planet. So always check them both out. We need five power and we're going to have to build at least two solar arrays or two wind turbines. So let's go for the wind turbines. One there. One there. There you go. So now it's fully powered and we just need a storage container. Storage container requires aluminum, iron, and hey, lo and behold, adaptive frames. And let's put it beside the outpost beacon. Storage container right here. Boink. And modify mode. Attach the extractor to the storage container. And Bob's your uncle. That's it. Okay, so we're good to go. We now have a source of tungsten, just like that, for free. Okay, so let's build a bed and get it happening. Build mode over the furniture, down to bed. Plunk a bed right here and have a little nap. I'd say about eight hours. Mr. Laptop says I have to wait eight hours to fill up the tungsten. There we go. Done and done. Let's check it out. And we have a source of tungsten for free. Anytime you need some tungsten, just come here and get yourself some tungsten. Who loves you? Slack loves us. That's right. Don't you forget it. And we're going to take on board a supply of 50 tungsten. That's all we need. 50 tungsten. And let's rename the outpost simply tungsten. Stop that, Mr. Fumblefingers. There we go, tungsten. <laughs> Simple enough. Still being going to space, looking around. Come down here. And this is a quick reminder that this outpost has tungsten. Done and done. Let's send those resources to... Let's just go on the ship. Send all these resources and this double check 636. So it's good. Alright, now we're gonna make a few jumps. To work on payloads. Next jump is going to be to Sakharov. Right there. Kinda like southeast of Alpha Centauri. What have we here? Oh, here we go. We gotta jump. Um, we don't have any business to, in Sakharov, so it's gonna make another jump right away, and that would be to Oberon Prime, and as I go back on, I'm gonna quickly grab all the power bars out of my particle beam and put them into grab drive so we can jump away quickly. Um, Oberon Prime right there, and punch it, Chewy. Don't want to engage. We're about business. Okay, Oberon Prime, and let's wait for the XP to roll in. And yes, that does make a difference. We have some enemy activity here. Let's get out of here. Yes, I tested this. If you don't wait for the XP to roll in when discovering a new planet or system, um, you won't get it. The game simply will not award it to you. You have to come back to that location and wait long enough for the XP to roll in. And I've tested that. So, yeah. Uh, next jump would be Linnaeus. And we're in jump mode. We have all our... Um,
Here we are in Linnaeus. XP rolling in. And you notice what I did there? I was um, alternating between boosting and canceling the boost. That's a, that's a way to keep yourself safe until your grab drive kicks in. So boost, cancel, boost, cancel. And you cancel it by simply pressing the back button. So, whoops. So boost, cancel, boost, cancel, boost, cancel. Just like that. We don't have any business in Linnea, so next jump would be to Arene. Arene? Um, I don't know how to pronounce this. It's up here at Olympus. And hang on. Set course. Arene. 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 I don't even know if that's a real name. Let's jump there. Racking up the grab jumps. And it looks like a hot landing zone. Let's see if we can uh, get away with, um, just turn off the inches, just wait for the XP to roll in. See, that's what I was telling you about before. If you keep your engines down to zero and you come into a hot landing zone, they often don't notice you. Okay, next jump would be Olympus. It's right here. Just to continue to, um... To pile up the grab jumps. There you go. And it looks like a safe location, so let's wait for the XP to roll in. Oh, we've already been here before. Okay, so... Next jump is Maheo, it's right next to Cheyenne. Cheyenne is up here. No, wait a minute. Up here. But we've been to Cheyenne, so let's opt to go to Maheo. So we get some XP for that. XP. Next jump. Sagan. Nope. There it is, right there. Sagan. Give me my XP game. You know you want to have a boy. And let's check our progress. Payloads is one we want. We have 18 out of 25 jumps. Very good. Next, Arcturus. It's going to be greatly to our advantage to discover this place in advance. Um, to find Arcturus, my notes say put Cheyenne in the center. Okay, first of all, zoom right out. Put Cheyenne right there, and it should be... Huh, there's a place called Heisenberg. Did I just see that? There's Arcturus, right there. There we go, Heisenberg. Post a comment if you know what that refers to. <laughs> um... Arcturus, it is greatly to our advantage to discover this in advance so that when we go there later for combat, we won't have that big notification saying, you have now arrived in Arcturus, blocking your way when you're trying to engage in combat. Okay, so definitely discover this. And 
and bring up the map as soon as you can, as soon as you arrive, just in case there's some hostiles. Because you want to land, and we want to land at Arcturus 2. Let's scan. And my notes say... Look for tiny uranium between two land masses. There it is right there. Okay, this uranium plot right here between these two land masses right here. This is exactly where we want to go. Just plunk yourself right in the center. You don't have, it does not have to be exact. And make sure it says sandy desert and land. Get up. Let's refresh our well rested bonus. Okay, and we are here for sealant. Go outside. Bring up your scanner, and you're looking for cactuses. There's some right there. Yeah, I just want to wait till this lands because I won't be able to hear myself think. What the hell, dude? You're landing right where I want to go. Huh. What a golden opportunity. Looks like there's a little change in plans, people. What is that? Free ship. Okay, anyways, first of all, why we're here? This stuff here. See these cacti or cactuses here? They always have these plants around them called Hecate's Fireleaf. These things right here Hecate's Fireleaf. And these are a great source of sealant. So harvest as much sealant as you can from all these. And you can, you can spot them easily because, like I said, they're always beside these cactus-like structures. See these things here? Alright, so let's just go around and harvest a whole bunch of sealant. And we're going to need... How much do I need, Mr. Laptop? Initially, we're only going to need three, but later on, we're going to need um, another 20 or 25 or so. So, I would harvest as many as you can. Okay, from these things right here. Okay, so it's going to be pretty routine. So I'm going to do this off camera, and you can too. And um, if your patch of Hecate's Fireleaf is small, you can always find another patch. Like I said, just look for those those cactus-like things. They're always found on this planet in sandy deserts, typically in uranium, patches of uranium. Okay, so if this patch dries up as you're as you're hunting around for Hecate's Fireleaf, here's another patch of your uranium here. This one also has Hecate's Fireleaf. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna leave you with that homework, and we're gonna continue next video with Operation Recon S1, and I'm probably gonna check out that ship over there because I can't resist. I'm going to throw that in for seeing the next video. So thanks a lot for watching. My name is Major Slack, and I definitely approve this video. If you do too, please give the old Slacks a big old thumbs up. Post a comment.
and most importantly, subscribe to make sure you get all my videos hot of the press. All right, see you next time. Hey guys, real walkthroughs like these are an endangered species here on YouTube. For a complete lowdown on the YouTube video game walkthrough scene, check out my Patreon page and please consider making a donation to yours truly, Major Slack, to help keep real walkthroughs alive on YouTube. You can donate as little as $1. That's $1, that's all. That's all it takes, all right? Thanks a lot, really appreciate it.